Hello all, this is Stephen with Gravitate and today we're going to be covering event tracking in Google Analytics through Google Tag Manager and how you can set up templates for yourself or your clients uh, to make things really easy for setting up base events on all of your websites um, or applications. So I guess we'd like to get started here by discussing a little bit about what an event is. Um, let's head on over to a website such as ours and um, maybe we want to know how often people are clicking on our email address. That could be an event. Um, an event could be how often people click on the submit button. An event could be how deep people scroll on a page or click on this address or hover over this contact button. So really you can make anything on your website an event with enough um, effort and tracking. Uh, there's a really endless possibilities as to what can be an event, but the idea is that we're tracking things that will help us understand the performance of the website over time. So traditionally to do event tracking, and I'll just go ahead and pull up um, a blog post that we wrote about event tracking and this blog post uh, is very popular actually a lot of people value this blog post and it goes into detail with um, universal analytics and the async version of analytics and how you're able to send event information from the web page to Google um, analytics in the code so traditionally you'd have to add this line of code to an element on page um, and you'd have to declare on click or whatever the action is to get that event information over to Google Analytics. And you know, it was, uh, it's, you can still do it this way. It's a little bit um, more development oriented and you have to have a lot of uh, dev chops or just have a developer on staff or hire somebody to do this for you. It can kind of be expensive. So one reason why we recommend using Tag Manager is that it's so easy to get the code part of it done. All you need to do is add one snippet of code to the head section of the page you want to do tracking on and one snippet of code at the top of the body section, uh, which is really great. And that's something most any developer can help you do on your website. Um, I will say if you're using an applications such as React, Angular, anything that's um, serve, you know client-side rendered, then you're going to want to change these triggers from page views, and I, I think it's a route changes or using the history call, um, but that's a little beyond our scope for today. We're going to assume you have a normal uh, PHP-based website, either through WordPress or um, some other CMS, you know, this could even work on Shopify for that matter. And we're going to talk about how we can load the events through Tag Manager and it's really pretty easy. We want to start by putting the base script of Google Analytics on every page and if you do not already have that on your website we recommend you get that set up. It's a free service from Google. Um, if you do have a Google account, and, and if you don't you should uh, make one because you'll need one for this Tag Manager account as well. And if you want to move your Google Analytics to Tag Manager, that's totally fine. Um, you can do that by creating a new tag here and whatever version of Analytics, it's probably Universal Analytics. And you can set it up to track page views that trigger on all pages. You would save that guy and uh, be good to go. Um, I put a template together with Google Analytics and some standard events as well as a, a program called the Hotjar which lets you do heat mapping. That is also free. So I put together a template a JSON file which we'll talk a little bit about that later but if you want to use this template it's uh, very handy and um, it's in the bottom of the, the blog post so if you're coming from YouTube click through to the blog post and you'll see the download link um, at the bottom there, or if you're on the blog post, just scroll down and, and download it. Um, you'll need a text editor like Atom, <clears throat> A-T-O-M, which is free. 
some sort of code editor to change, uh, find and replace some of these fields that I have put in place there. And, and we'll show you how to import that into Tag Manager at the end of this video. So if you really just want somebody to do this for you, you can skip along to the end. If you want to really understand what's going on, I recommend you hang out and uh, look at how these things work. So let's start with the example of wanting to track email clicks. So let's say we want to track uh, whenever somebody clicks a link that starts with the mail to colon. And the mail to, if you click it, will open up um, the default mail app so you can send a uh, email to that uh, address that's clicked. So let's go to Tag Manager and see how I have this event set up. We have an event that's Google Analytics event and instead of the track type being page view which is default we have it be an event and the event will um, need some parameters. So I recommend kind of thinking through the way you want to uh, categorize and classify these parameters. For me it makes sense to have a category of contact in this case where the action is email clicked and the label for this event is blank URL so it will give us the URL service at gravitatedesign.com was clicked from the page path. So it'll give us the URL um, in which that label was clicked and if you'd like to throw in some other variables here as you see with these squirrely brackets you can click on the variable tab and uh, pick a, a host of different things in there to get further information about where um, or how those events are happening. On the topic of variables, if you're setting up your Google Analytics through um, Tag Manager or just doing event tracking, in either case you'll need to set up a Google Analytics um, variable <coughs> for all of your events and page tracking. So you can head on over to Variables here, scroll on down, create new variable, and if you look by a, a default, and da, 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 da. we're doing this on the fly here. We're going to see where uh, we create that variable. Let's back it up. Let's say we add uh, Google Analytics as a new tag. I believe it prompts you to create a new variable. Let's find out. Select variable settings, new variable, Google Analytics tracking ID. And then this tracking ID here is your UA number. Um, it's probably UA something something blah 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 something like that and then you would title it um, your Google Analytics variable or GA variable. I've already created one so we would apply this one here. So let's back it up. If you have any trouble with that step we have another blog post that talks about um, getting Tag Manager and um, Google Analytics set up that is kind of its own thing. If you're just getting started and you're not quite sure where to, where to go, or what to do, here is some step-by-step -step information on um, how to do that. And that's again just in our uh, Tag Manager event tracking blog. So let's look at this email clicks one. We have uh, told Google what we want our parameters to be. We've set up our analytics variable so we know which Google Analytics property to send that information to. The next step would be to set up a trigger. So a trigger lets us know when we want to fire this event. So we obviously uh, need some rules or conditions as to when this event will fire. So let's take a look at what an email click trigger looks like. All right. So in this case, we created an event that was just links and there's a ton of different trigger types here. Form submission, scroll depth, video, um, errors, timers, a bunch of different things. Element clicks if you want to get specific to um, somebody clicking on an element that's not a link and that would be anything. Um, you can really get specific with any element that has a certain ID or CSS uh, selector and uh, you get all those with these different conditions here. You, you can open up and see all these different conditions. Um, for us right now, we did a link click. I recommend setting this, this delay 
of uh, 2,000 milliseconds. So you just click wait for tags and that will wait for um, your base Google Analytics tag to fire before the event fires. That's very important. Again, if you have your analytics outside of Tag Manager, that's fine. Make sure it fires before Tag Manager fires. Um, there's some reasons why you might want to do this if you're using Google Optimize and you're wanting some really um, top-notch performance out of your experiment or if you're using something within gtag.js that can't be accomplished through Tag Manager, I could see the case where you'd want to put, put that um, script of Google Analytics out of Tag Manager. Um, so not to get on a tangent, but there is some cases where you can have GA outside of Tag Manager. Okay, so we want to wait 2,000 milliseconds and fire on any page URL. So anytime a page URL matches the regular expression, if you guys are not familiar with regular expression, this basically means any page. So anytime a page URL contains anything, we're going to allow this trigger to fire. And it's going to fire on some link clicks where the click URL starts with mail2. Wowzers, so that seems like a lot. How do we know before rolling this into production that it's working properly? Well, fortunately, um, GTM has this little preview feature, which is very nice, in which you can put your um, yourself in a preview mode where it acts like it goes to production. And if you um, head on over to your website in which the, the code is applied and refresh your page, you'll see this debug window come up. The debug window is useful for a number of different things, but in our case, we're hoping to see this GTM email click event fire when I click on this email address here. The reason why Tag Manager is so great is it not only um, gives you this debug window, but it helps uh, overall with page speed and not bloating the page with a bunch of event code that doesn't need to be there. So this code will only fire once this is clicked um, before the code would have to be there and uh, it's just, you know, you would actually have to be in the markup already where now it just lives in Tag Manager and it's waiting to fire. So we go ahead and um, click on this email. I'm going to get this pop up here, no big deal, Let's close it. We know that link works, but if we head back, yes, we see that the tag did fire on this page and the action and the category all look correct and we'll see that it was um, fired on a click URL that started with mail2 so, and the regular expression worked out, so all that looks great. So that is a way that you can kind of troubleshoot and debug things if it's not working correctly. I find myself using this a lot if I'm using a um, trigger Let's say we're doing a, a trigger with um, an element and not a link. So sometimes if we go elements and we're going to go on some clicks and do matches like CSS selector or click element matches CSS selector. Sometimes if you're doing an element, you need to um, do some troubleshooting because maybe the thing you click on isn't really the thing you click on, if that makes sense. So that's how you can get started. And there's a bunch of different things in here that I have set up for links to Facebook and links to Instagram. Um, you may want to do some real-time tracking in addition to the debug tool before rolling into production. In the blog post, I talk about that a little bit. Um, inside of Google Analytics, you have this real track, uh, real-time tracking option where you can see your events actually come through um, hopefully you have a filtered and a non-filtered view so your um, information about your events that you do uh, is being blocked in your filtered view of analytics where you're not um, tracking your own IP address. If you have trouble with that, please reach out to us and we can help you. Now that we have all of these events set up and we're ready to roll into production, you can leave the preview mode, submit your change here, and uh, you can create a new version and we'll just call this like GTM events added. Add some details in here. We did email tracking, Facebook link 
clicks and anything else you want to put in there that your um, you know future employees or your coworkers may want to take a look at if troubleshooting something. Let's say we have this template and we really like it and we don't want to go through the whole work of applying this template to another client or another one of our website properties if we work for a company. You can go into the admin panel here and export this container and replace, find and replace some of these dynamic fields such as the UAID, the root domain, uh, maybe that hot jar ID if we're going to use it and um, re-upload or import that to a different container. If you do an import, it's going to ask you, let's do a, do a test here. So let's go to do, 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 tag manager template. So let's do a test here. If we were to upload this template, it's going to ask us if we want to do a new or existing workspace. And if we want to merge or overwrite the files, and um, the reason we're getting this error, error here is that we have not deleted um, this code that I put at the top, which um, gives you instruction on how to do this find and replace. So in short, if you want to use our template, you would find and replace UA ID here with yours. So it may be UA dash a bunch of different numbers. Um, and that's all good. Find and replace all that. And then you do the same thing for rootdomain.com. You would find that, replace it with your domain. Boom. And then if you have a Hotjar account, I recommend you do this. It's kind of nice just either for yourself or your clients for a just a free heat mapping tool and you don't have to engage with it right away but it's nice to start to track um, uh, at least basic information from Hotjar and if you want to do some video tracking down the road that's a possibility. So you could find and replace that. Um, after you are done you can delete these five lines, save the document as a different name and then import that into your uh, new or existing container. So this may have been a lot of information and it is a little overwhelming at first, but I promise you once you get the setup done, um, doing event tracking through Tag Manager is not only uh, more efficient, it cuts down on dev time, but um, you're able to really share information, do some uh, more real time work with other coworkers or other vendors and stuff, and it's just a more professional way of handling event tracking um, overall. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, hello at gravitatedesign.com, and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon.